Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 Mumbai newsroom. I'm Pavitra Parekh, you're tuned in to Mutual Fund Corner. And today we're going to talk all about debt funds, investing in a rising interest rate scenario, who this is really best suited to, as well as the different categories that you can pick within the debt space. So, so to answer all of these questions, we have a very special guest with us, Harshwardhan Rungta joins us from Rungta Securities and he's with us here in the studio. So Harshwardhan, thank you very much for coming by and you know taking up the time to come to our studios as well. Like I told you, it's always better to have these conversations in person. And we have a lot of questions also that have come through. So we'll get to that. But first, on debt funds itself, you know, we always talk about how everyone should have some kind of exposure to debt. But considering that we are in this rising interest rate scenario, do you think there's a case to perhaps pause, wait a bit and then invest later? So, well, Pavitra, you'll need to understand how debt funds function and what is the relationship of uh, the returns that you generate in debt funds vis-a-vis -vis the movement of interest rate. So, like if you were an investor in fixed deposits, yeah. now you've invested a lakh of rupees, you were, uh, you know, you're told that you'll get a 7% interest, irrespective of what the interest rate movements in the economy would be, mm. you continue to get 7% yeah. and your principal amount invested is 1 lakh. Mm. Now, in a debt mutual fund, it does not exactly work like that. So, while you've invested probably a lakh of rupees mm. and, uh, and you've started with 7%, for example, and if interest rates move, yeah. if they start going up, you start experiencing a capital loss on your 1 lakh as well. Yeah. Okay, and the vice versa. If interest rates are falling, mm. you'll probably make a capital gains on your cap on the principal amount invested. Mm. Now, I'll explain. Because interest rates and, uh, you know, the price of bonds uh, are inversely related. You know, inversely related. Now, I'll explain this with an example. Yeah. Now, uh, suppose that Mr. X had invested a lakh of rupees mm. in 10-year GSEX, okay, the government securities, yeah. uh, 10 years, and the coupon rate was 7%. Now, and the face value is 100, mm. okay? Now, the interest rate in the economy has moved to 740, 7.4%. Now, most certainly, if I were to sell these bonds in the market, I'm not going to be able to sell it at 100 rupees because the interest rates are at 7.4%. Right. I will have to sell my bonds at a discount. So, if I sell it for, say, 97.5, mm. then the yield to maturity to the buyer is 7.4%. So, if the interest rates are going up, you will find the prices of bonds coming down. So there's a capital loss and, and vice versa. As I said, yeah. if interest rates are going down, you'll start making capital gains. Yeah. Uh, your question is, should you pause at this juncture? While if you look at this in conjunction with the inflation data, okay, we've seen the Jan CPI being at 6.52. Yeah. Most certainly it's good, it's fair to assume that RBI may go, uh, continue. You know, continue the rate hike. Right. So quite possible we may not be at the peak of the rate cycle yet. So, in case you invest now and interest rates go up, then there is certainly a case where you might experience some kind of loss. Hmm. So, maybe, yeah, there could be some kind of a, uh, you know, case in study here to say that there could be a, a moment where you could experience some kind of interim loss onto your principal amount. So, say there's a new investor who's trying to get into the market, wants some amount of debt exposure, wants some amount of equity. Would you say do the equity part now and wait on debt and, you know, look at that? Um, maybe in a couple of months' time, reassess? Okay, yeah, so there are two elements to this. You'll have to figure out as to which category do you fit in. So yeah. if there is an investor who understands that, you know, the nuances of debt fund that I explained to yeah. you, that if you're investing now and uh, if interest rates go up, hmm. there's a possibility of capital loss. Yeah. And that could be interim, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not course. going to be permanent because when interest, in, interest rate starts coming down, it'll of course correct. You'll, yeah. you'll correct yourself and you'll, make that, uh, you'll recover your losses, hmm. the notional uh, loss. However, if there are investors who do not understand the nuances of debt funds, like how do they function, interest rate movement, etc., then yeah. I think fixed deposits are a good place to be. And fixed deposits at this uh, juncture where your uh, you know, SBI kind of banks are offering you a 7% plus, I think it's a good rate to uh, go in. If you're a fixed deposit investor, you can might as well block in now or lock mm -hmm. in your capital at this juncture. What becomes a point in contention is that if you're going to invest into a, a debt fund right now, and if there is an interest rate uh, hike again, yeah. uh, in the interim, mark, mark to market, you will experience some kind of a loss, mm. which you're, if you're okay to, hold on to. I'd like to add further, yeah. saying that historically we've seen that when interest rates are in 758 range, mm. the 7.5 to 8% range, if any investor has gotten at this juncture, over a period of two to three years, they would have made very good returns. Why? Because interest rates are kind of peak at yeah. these times. Yeah. You may not be able to capture or the, you know, uh, the book at the peak, I mean, like how in equity markets, you yeah. can't catch the bottom and the peak. So is the case with interest rate. Yeah. But I think it's a fairly good uh, uh, time to invest with the view that it might in the short term give you a subdued kind of a returns. Mm -hmm. But over a period of two to three years, you'll recover a good rate of return. Okay. 
That's very useful and I'm glad you took us through those examples as well because like you said, you know, it's important to understand how debt funds work in the first place to be able to get in and to make an informed choice. But Harshra, then take us through what you see as the key benefits of a debt fund, you know, like we tell every investor that please have some amount of debt exposure as well um, in your portfolio. Of course, depending on your risk appetite, that can change. But what do you see as the key benefits? And then also take us through, you know, whether there's a low risk, medium risk or high risk kind of, uh, you know, portfolio. What is the debt to equity split that you would suggest here? Yeah, so, you know, the first element was that should a person have debt allocation? Because we spoke about this at several locations saying yeah. that you need to have an asset allocation plan yes. in place, wherein some portion of your money goes into equity, some in debt, mm. right? So why do you invest in debt in the first place? So you invest in debt because you want to protect your capital. Like yeah. equity is for growth. Yeah. You want money to grow. Yeah, and you're willing to take certain amount of risk. In debt, your primary objective is to protect your capital mm. and have liquidity so that, you know, whenever you need the money, you can redeem. Yes. And the third point would be get nominal returns. You don't want it to uh, just lie around and get nothing. Mm. So this is your objective to invest in your debt funds. Mm. Now, what kind of investors should get into this? Is What are the advantages particularly, if I may say so? Of course, liquidity stands first. In yeah. comparison to fixed deposits, you can withdraw out or liquid, uh, into your liquid funds or debt funds very conveniently. Mm. The second element is a tax advantage that you get. Like a fixed deposit, yeah. all the interest that you earn is going to be taxed at your marginal tax rate. Whatever is your tax slab, you're going to pay. So you could right. be even as high as 30%. Mm. In a debt fund for high income earners, I mean, if you're investing for more than three years, so that's mm. long-term capital gains, the taxation is 20% after getting indexation benefits. So net effect of tax really comes down you know, drastically and yeah. your impact would be probably on a rough basis, if I may say, would be about 10% or so. Mm. So there's a huge tax arbitrage. Okay. Now, uh, your second question was, is there different categories? Mm. Yes, so uh, SEBI has defined the categories of mutual funds in the debt side. There are 16 categories that you can invest into. Mm. So somebody who doesn't want to take any risk at all, could be no, no duration risk, nothing. So you have an overnight fund. Yeah. Okay, that's the starting uh, point of a debt fund, which is the lowest, uh, you know, say volatile or a fluctuating uh, product. Yeah. Going up to uh, long-term bonds, I mean, you have constant maturity, you know, so there, is, there are 16 such categories. Mm. You have an overnight, liquid, ultra-short money market, low duration, uh, you have short-term, medium-term corporate bond, banking PSU, credit risk. Yeah. There, are, there are a lot of these categories. There's a product for everybody <laughs> out there. Absolutely. But uh, Harshwadhan, what I actually want to know is that, say I have a medium risk profile, how much money should I put in debt and how much in equity? I'm not talking about the specific debt instrument here, or which kind of fund, just overall in debt, how much should I keep and how much should I keep in equity? If you can take us through someone who has a low risk profile, a medium as well as a high risk. I mean, so obviously the debt equity split will also vary, right? So, you know, Pavitra, the asset allocation uh, ratios that you're talking about yeah. is largely dependent on, on what are the goals and timelines. Yeah, of course. So if a person needed money after one year, then of course it's going mm. to be 100% debt. Mm. So if I remove those elements yeah. out and yeah. talk in general, so if I remove the specifics to individual like a goal, time horizon, yeah. etc. Let's say a large time horizon, a longer time horizon. Yeah. For so let's case. take a general, uh, you know, generic view if a person wants to, uh, with a low risk profile. Yeah. So low risk profile would entails having a low equity exposure. Right. Now, low equity exposure, by all means, if you have a long-term time horizon and you have low risk profile, mm. I would still say you need to have about 50% into equities. Right. For a simple reason, because you need to beat inflation. Mm. And the only product uh, investment that could beat inflation is equity. Yeah. So 50% in that case. Now, of course, I'm being generic yeah. uh, in my reply. Of course. So 50% would be for somebody who has a low risk profile. So 50% debt, 50% equity. Hmm. A person who has a medium uh, risk kind of a profile, then of course, you'll want to increase your equity. So that goes to about 70%, hmm. right? If there's a high risk profile, you could go up to 80 to 90%. Yeah. Now, this is, again, very generic, as I said. But emphasis is on the fact that based on your risk profile, you're deciding how much you're going to equity and debt. The reason you're doing this is because over a long period of time, eventually you need to beat inflation on a total corpus. Yeah. So you need to have equity and debt allocation. Debt yeah. gives you that, as I said, capital protection. It gives you liquidity. It gives you nominal return. Mm. So that will be the objective. All right. That is very useful. And I think that's a complete explainer on how you should really go about thinking about, you know, debt funds and where you should invest. Uh, like you pointed out, there are 16 categories, subcategories within the debt space. So there's definitely something for everyone. You just have to find what fits uh, you best. But on that note, we do have to get into a short break. Harsh, I request you to please stay on because we have lots more queries and we've actually got lots of queries from our viewers as well. So we're going to take them up after the short break.
Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Mutual Fund Corner here on CNBC TV 18. And we still have Harsh Vardhan Rungta with us in the studios. And actually, we've got a lot of viewer queries which have come in. So we're going to get straight to those and help you understand how you should really go about your investments. The first one comes in from Shailesh Singh, who writes to us from Ahmedabad. He started investing in the Axis Focus 25 fund in 2018. He says, however, in 2022, since the performance of the fund lagged the benchmark for more than a year, he stopped his SIPs, but he left the invested amount in the fund itself. Harshwadhan, he's now asking you, what should he do? Should he withdraw this amount which he left invested or, you know, should he let it be in the fund? You know, uh, so Pavitha, if you look at the performance of Axis Focus 25 in isolation, yeah. yes, it has not done well. I mean, there is no doubt on that part that it has been an underperformer to its benchmark, which yeah. is Nifty 500. Now, uh, the mandate of an uh, of a focused fund is to create a concentrated portfolio mm. of about, say, 25 uh, kind of companies. That's why it is Access 25. Yeah. And uh, so, ideally, it should not be compared to a Nifty 500. You know, you okay. cannot compare it because it's a 500 stock, uh, you know, portfolio. I mean, the index with a 25 or a 22 stock yeah. portfolio. Yeah. So, it's not ideally comparable. Nevertheless, even if you look at its long-term returns mm. in comparison to its peers, like what the category average has been, they've done reasonably well. Okay. They may not be the top performer even then, mm. but, uh, you know, they're decent enough. I mean, I wouldn't say that there's something very alarming for you at this juncture to look to exit out of it. Okay. So, considering the fund house, considering that uh, he has been investing for some time, I think he can still hold on for another one year mm. and then probably do a review after that. Okay. So, I hope that helps. You can sort of leave your investment in the fund for another one year and then take a call. We have another query which has come in. This is from CS Darshan Shah, who writes to us again from Ahmedabad. He wishes to start an SIP of 7,500 to 10,000. This is for the next 20 years that he wants to do this. Currently, he's been investing 2,000 rupees each in the ICICI Prudential Equity and Debt Fund and the Kotak Flexicap Fund Direct for a period of five years. He wants to know a suitable fund to start his next SIP. So he already has some investments. He's looking to invest around 7,500 to 10,000. Uh, what is the next one that you would suggest? You know, so since he already has a flexi cap mm. and he has a, a hybrid equity, which is the ICSA equity debt, yeah. I think the value-oriented fund and a mid-cap fund will be the best suited for his portfolio. So he okay. will complement and he'll get the best of the value-oriented investing style and the mid-cap. Mm. Uh, so what I recommend to him uh, would be to split the investment. So either he wants to do a 7,500 or 10, mm. whatever is the amount, split them into equal parts and invest into SBI contra fund and the ABSL Nifty uh, Mid-Cap 150 Index Fund. Okay, got that. So that will help him, you know, get, uh, like you said, you can put half of it in a value fund and then also look at the mid-cap space. Uh, Harshwadhan, while we're on this topic, how many, uh, you know, companies or funds do you think it's good to have in your portfolio? Because there's also the, uh, you know, topic that we talk about very often of over-diversification of putting your money in too many funds because you're not being able to shortlist. Uh, do you have like a broad number that you could suggest? I, we, we always say this, that a, a portfolio consisting of about five to six schemes, yeah. it's, it's good enough. Yeah. Anything more than that is not serving the purpose of diversification. Yeah. You, know, only you can going cover to, everything in absolutely, that part. Absolutely, because each scheme invests into about 30 to 40 companies. Yeah. And invariably, you'll find uh, overlapping amongst them. Yeah. So five to six schemes is good enough. Okay, perfect. So that will definitely help our viewers. The next query is from Joshua Pinto, who writes to us from Mumbai. He says he's keen on investing via a lump sum investment and he would like um, to be recommended some options on the best performing equity as well as debt funds. He's saying he's a moder uh, moderate risk kind of investor and he wants to know also about the tax saving benefits that he can get uh, under Section 80CC and, um, you know, which funds would be best suited for that purpose. So equity and debt, what would you recommend? Okay, uh, so uh, he did mention about the core portfolio strategy and a satellite strategy. Mm. So core would be, you know, essentially just for the benefit of the viewers, yeah. core strategy would be forming that part of your portfolio, which is say quality, for example, yeah. looking at stability, consistency, etc. And the satellite portion would be where you're looking to get a little bit of extra return in term in return of some extra volatility that mm. you're willing to take. So uh, the strategy for core portfolio, I'm not still touching upon ATC benefits. Yeah. I'm just saying if you're building a core portfolio. Uh, you would have a nifty as a large cap and a value-oriented kind of a scheme would fall into the core portfolio strategy. Mm. Uh, you would have an ABSL Nifty 50 equal weight index fund. So that's a large cap index fund. And ICICI value discovery. So on the value uh, investing oriented side. Okay. The satellite, of course, a mid and a small cap. Mm. Uh, so you have a Kotak emerging equity and SBI small cap. Okay. In terms of the debt, he's asked also because, yes. uh, and you know, debt, again, I said there are 16 categories that you can invest mm. into. Uh, Without knowing exactly when is he going to enter, what is his time horizon of holding the uh, debt investment, I think a short-term debt fund would be the best category to invest into. Okay. 
All right, that sums it all up in terms of what you can look at for equity funds as well as debt funds. Harshwardhan, the next question is about something that we were just talking about actually. So I think you might want to take that as well. Dinesh Jain writes to us from Madhya Pradesh. He has invested 25,000 monthly in a total of 23 funds. This is what we were talking about. So I will ask you your thoughts on that as well. But his current portfolio valuation stands at 750,000. And he targets um, around 10 crores. This is for his retirement in the next 20 years from now. He needs help to filter his portfolio and to have a maximum of five to six funds. So he really wants to bring it down from these 23. But you know, this happens, it's understandable, right? That you don't understand where to put your money. So you think maybe let me spread it out. But if you can, uh, you know, help him here. Yeah, so the good part uh, on this, Pavitra, is that uh, Dinesh knows that he needs to do this. Yeah. I mean, we have to sometimes educate people that there's no point of having 23 schemes for a 25,000 piece per month. Right. right. So yeah, right. rightly, uh, you could just have five schemes. So I can suggest uh, five names. Four of these I picked up from your existing portfolio. So there's not much uh, that mm. you will have to do. Just have to consolidate a bit. Now, 5,000 each in the following schemes. Um, HDFC Index, Sensex Fund, Parakwarik FlexiCap, ABSL Nifty, Midcap 150 Index Fund, SBI Small Cap, Motila Loswal, NASDAQ 100 FOF. In this, uh, amongst these five schemes, I've only added one Midcap Index Fund, which is new. Otherwise, all four are your existing schemes. Uh, and of course, if you want to consolidate, uh, Dinesh, you will have to liquidate out of the other schemes that you have, other than these five, and reinvest them back in the same proportion into all these five schemes. Uh, with regards to accumulating 10 crores after 20 years with this investment, uh, well, it would not be possible just with this investment that you're doing, which is 7.5 lakhs of accumulated corpus and 25,000 SIP. You'll have to increase your SIP to about 90,000 rupees in case uh, you wish to accumulate 10 crores after 20 years. You may not be able to do that right away, but slowly and gradually, you know mm -hmm. how much you need to uh, get to. So as in when your income uh, goes up, please make sure you keep increasing your SIP. Okay, that's very useful. And um, like, you know, Harshwardhan was pointing out as well, you may not be able to do this right now, but as the years go by, you can look at going on increasing your SIPs. And I think, I mean, that's a lesson that all of us can probably take, right? In, fact, is... uh, in fact, as a as a thumb rule or yeah. as a matter of practice, not a thumb rule, as a matter of practice, we suggest that uh, your, in, uh, your investment should increase in the same proportion as your income goes yeah. up. Yeah. So if you're looking at a 10% increment, uh, yeah. your investments should, should also... also go up by 10% because this 10% increment every year will uh, will just suddenly balloon into a big amount when you look at, uh, yeah. you know, after 10, 20, 30 years from now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think that's very useful advice for everybody to take, not just for this query, but uh, I'm going to try to squeeze in one final query on the show as well. Vimal writes to us from New Delhi. He has been investing 1,000 rupees in the HSBC value fund for the last eight years. He wants to know whether he should remain invested in this whether you should exit, if there's a better option, what would you suggest? So, well, again, most certainly the HSBC value fund has not been performing, or rather, uh, I would not say it's out outperforming its peers or benchmarks. So, it mm -hmm. has been an underperformer, no doubt. But if I look at the data again for five to ten year period, then it is in line with the category average. Yeah. So, I'm assuming that this is just a phase that this fund is going through. And since he's already been investing since eight years, mm -hmm. I mean, I think he can continue for now and give the fund manage, uh, ma manager some more time. And the benefit of doubt that this is just a cycle. Yeah. He's having a bad patch probably. Yeah. And uh, they will get back. So I think, yeah, uh, Vimal, you can hold on to this scheme. Uh, continue investing. Look at it more closely for about a year or two. And then again, probably you'll have to review it. Okay. So continue to hold on to the HSBC Value Fund for now. Harshwardhan, on that note, we're going to wind down on this show. But thank you very much for coming by, taking us through a complete explainer on debt funds and also answering all of these viewer queries. Thank you for joining us. And with that, we will wind down on this edition of Mutual Fund Corner. You guys stay tuned because Closing Bell comes up next for the final hour of trade.